uh, we feel some drastic changes need to be made. Most of the y rookies are young and they're very impressionable. They're kind of being taught to use a soft glove approach and their training is how things should be, not how they are. We want them to be realistic. At some point, a rookie is going to have to defend himself as well as the citizens. That's what he's for. But the question we're asking is how can he when he hasn't been trained to do so? Uh, at the present time, no real instruction in how to use a handgun is taught. You don't even have to qualify on the firing range. We feel this should be mandatory. As a group, we can pull a lot of attention to anything that needs to be changed. And what's more important, we can get it changed. It is, a, it is true that I am against uh, bringing food and drugs and food and medicines and, or drugs underneath the, the sales tax. And I said this at the outset of the campaign. My position is, is still clear as it was at that time. I have not changed that position. If the ad said that I voted for uh, the 18-year-old vote, it was simply not true. Uh, I don't know what ad they're even talking about. I certainly did not personally place any ad in, in the Daily Texan. I freely admitted that it's a matter of record that I voted against the 18-year-old uh, provision of lowering the voting age to 18 years. And, uh, this is, has been documented, and uh, I have never said that I did anything but vote against the lowering of the voting age. Nevertheless, the ad does exist. Well, I'll certainly take a look at it, and I'll find out uh, who put the ad in, uh, who made the declaration, and uh, and. Uh, at this point in time, I haven't seen it. This is the third year for a ph and jury. It started in 1970, and we're pleased that, that year that uh, 275,000 young men participated. Last year, 450,000, and this indicates to us that parents and young boys ages 9, 10, 11, and 12 uh, certainly uh, have accepted PH and T, and this year we hope to serve 700,000 boys. And the deadline to register for pitch, hit, and throw in the Dallas area is June the 4th. And all they need to do is drop into a participating Phillips 66 dealer, pick up their tips booklet, and inside the tips booklet is a registration form, and the dealer will tell them where the first competition will be held. The local competition start June the 10th. And as you know, as boys progress in pitch, hit, and throw, they can eventually win their way to a paid expense trip for them and their parents to the Major League All-Star Game July the 25th in Atlanta, Georgia. One of the members who lives in that area had received some complaints from some of the people who live in her neighborhood that they thought the housing was, was kind of bad because of the, well, it started, it started with the construction of the house, the way they constructed. And from there it went to the uh, way the uh, she complained about the the only one ex, so we began to discuss this, and it was supposed to be investigated by the housing committee, and they went out and looked at the housing, and we kind of, you know, threw it around at different meetings. I guess about three or four meetings. At the last meeting, I I suggested well, the meeting before the last meeting, I suggested that uh, we go on record, that HRC go on record as not support as being uh, as not supporting housing that has only one ex, you know. And uh, when this came up, it kind of shook some members up on the, on the HRC, and then they really, really didn't want to get into it, really want to get into it, so it was suggested that it would be tabled, and it was tabled until another meeting. And it seems rather unreasonable to me for us to uh, issue a proclamation that the Human Relations Commission is against the rental of units that have been built under city codes that were in force at the time they were designed and constructed. 
Do you seriously believe there's a possibility you can get that change that uh, a code might be rewritten for future structures? Certainly. Uh, I don't know of, of uh, any building codes that do not have a process for revision. George Gooch is a sign painter. He is also part of a vanishing breed in America. He still hand letters all of his signs at a time when most of the commercial artists in this country are going to the stick-on type of letters. George, how long have you been at this business? Oh, i say around 25 years, probably. We don't well, see many people roaming the streets looking for a sign anymore. jobs. No, not anymore. They're just a uh, uh, kind of a vanishing breed because... Uh, I don't know. They, maybe they uh, can make more with other, other trades. Maybe some of them don't, don't have the talent. But uh, exact cause, I don't know. You don't see anymore. I, I, I used to, you could see them going down the street there every now and then, you know. What's the funniest thing ever happened to you on the job? Oh, well, a lot of them I've forgotten. Some of them would take too long to tell. But uh, I'll tell you, one little experience I thought, always thought it was amusing. Not at the time, but now when I think about it, out in Mesquite Rodeo. We was painting out there on that wall. <laughs> them cowboys branded them Bremer bulls out there. And they wanted this sign in a hurry, and so I painted them while they was in there brand branding these bulls. And <laughs> I spent part of my time painting, the other time climbing that wall out there. <laughs> <laughs> Which you do the most of. <laughs> I pretty climbed that wall. Them cowboys, them cowboys said, we'll take care of you. But it didn't make, certainly make me believe it at the time. Just didn't make a believer out of you. Yeah, we got the sign done, but yeah. and that's one of them bulls like two, three times bigger inside there than they do outside that arena. Have you ever thought about uh, changing your career and doing something else? <laughs> Not after 25 years. Got to stick with it now. Uh, I think so. I like it. Thank you, George. Interesting talking to you. Uh, talking to George Gooch. He's a, like I say, he's kind of a vanishing breed in America. He still letters his own science, and he goes uh, door to door, if you will, well, sometimes soliciting well, the work. Say, I'm a little bit nervous. Now, I ain't never been on television before, <laughs> and ain't never been in the movies before, as I know anything about. <laughs> I'll bet you 20 cents you get over it. I, I, I believe I will. From Pleasant it's Grove, <laughs> from Pleasant Grove, this is Jim Mitchell, Channel 8 News on the move.
just walk around up and in the in the door. We don't think it will be too severe uh, because there is going to have to be a continuance of, of defense spending while it may shift from, from one side to the other. Uh, there are going to be an increase, we feel, in, in dollars for research and dollars for development, and we are trying very hard to, to get small companies interested in this type of, of uh, business. What is your comment to the criticisms that possibly there's something immoral about businesses being involved in defense contracts? I don't think there's anything immoral about either large or small business being involved in defense contracts. After all, we're talking about, come right down to it, we're talking about the defense of our country, for the defense of our country, and there's certainly nothing immoral about that.
Well, we're opposed to this tax due to the fact that it's levied directly at the wage earner. And uh, we feel it is an unjust tax. Who will be responsible for collecting this kind of a tax? Well, I, I s assume that the uh, employer will be the responsible for collecting the tax for the city of Fort Worth. Uh, we haven't seen anything in, in regards to the collection of the tax, but the, the, in general, the practice has been that together would be the employer. How many people do you represent in your council? Well, we represent approximately uh, 20,000 members in Tarrant County in the city of Fort Worth. When I found out I was pregnant, I first went to my doctor to make sure before I told my parents. And then I told my parents, and they urged me to see my priest. When I went to my doctor, he told me that abortion would be open to me if I wanted to do this. And he also told me that there was a hospital in the city where I live that would help me to adopt my baby out if I wanted to live at home and adopt my baby out. And so I, I hadn't ever thought of abortion before my doctor brought it up to me. And I thought about it a long time and I decided that it really wasn't the thing for me. So he told me about the home and told me that I wouldn't have to give up my baby if I came here and that I would get counseling and I would get help. And so I decided to come and I'm glad I did. And I've changed my mind since then. I've decided to give my baby up for adoption because I feel like I would only be a part-time mother, and I couldn't be a father, and I want my baby to have the best start in life that he can. At Planned Parenthood, they gave me three sources of abortion count clinics, and said that they would give me counseling and all this. Well, that wasn't for me. I knew I couldn't go through with it even if I got to the clinic, so um, they also gave me some literature from here. I looked at it, and it was, it was okay, but at the time, I still didn't want to face the reality, so I just put it away. And a few weeks later, I saw um, the spot that they have for an Emerald Station. Um, and it said that if you were unmarried and pregnant, call this number, collect, we'd help. So a few days later, I called the number and I talked to one of the staff members. and. After I talked to her and after I'd cried for about three hours, I was so relieved because to know that there was somebody that didn't even know who I was that cared and that cared enough to say, come in any time, we'll do all we can for you, we'll help. And there was no pressure whatsoever. It was on a very personal basis. Um, every time she directed a quotation or directed something to me, she called me by name. She said to, to come in and do whatever. I was afraid that they wouldn't let me in because of financial reasons, but they said that that was no problem, that no girl was ever kept out because of financial reasons.